So recently, I upgraded my CPU from the Ryzen 5 2600 to this, the Ryzen 7 5800X. And there's a lot of controversy over this processor. And when I even upgraded uh, to this person, many asked me that, hey, why did you upgrade to this? You could have either jumped to the Ryzen 9 or could have uh, gone with Intel. Well, I know that I've done something for a reason. And in this video, I'm going to talk about why Ryzen 7 5800X is pretty much my choice for video gaming and also editing. And not only that, is this the right time to buy one of these 5000 series Ryzen AMD processors? because the Intel 12th gen is coming on the way and also AMD's Zen 4 will be uh, there next year. So is it the right time to buy the AMD Ryzen 5000 series CPU? So everything in this video, let's find out. So hey guys, welcome back. I'm Arnav and you are watching Tech Arena where I make videos on gaming and technology. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So as I said in the beginning, I recently upgraded my CPU from the Ryzen 5 2600 to the Ryzen 7 5800X. So my specs before were the MSI B450 Tomahawk motherboard with a 16GB RAM kit from Corsair which is the Vengeance series which is clocked at 3000MHz. I have uh, the GPU uh, of Zotac RTX 2060, the normal edition not the OC edition and stuff and I had of course the Ryzen 5 2600. So this was my spec before and now I had upgraded my processor as well as my cabinet. So uh, these are the two things that I've upgraded recently. As you can see, this is my cabinet. I had a much more compact and much more basic cabinet before. Uh, and I'll talk about the cabinet and why I chose this and all those stuff later. But then first and foremost question, why AMD? Now the first reason why I chose AMD is because I have a B450 chipset and in that only AMD Ryzen series process will be supporting. So that's the first thing. If I need to switch to an Intel counterpart, I should switch my motherboard and I have to spend again for the processor. So that's the main reason why I chose AMD. And you might ask me, like, uh, apart from the uh, you know motherboard thing, why did you go for AMD again? So the counterpart of the Ryzen 7 5800X in the same price, if you can see, is the Intel i7-10700K. Yes, it's a decent well processor. It performs really great. But when it comes to multitasking, like gaming, streaming, and editing, I think the Ryzen 7 5800X blows away uh, in terms of performance of the Intel i7-10700K. Let me give an example. So if you take the Cinebench R20 or uh, the Blender test, I think the uh, Ryzen 7 5800X has a good single core performance and it outperforms the i7-10700K in most of the productivity benchmarks. But in gaming, yes, it gives a neck and neck competition. Yes, sometimes the Ryzen outperforms Intel and sometimes Intel outperforms Ryzen. Only when it comes to gaming, Intel gets its job right. But when it comes to all the multitasking stuff, whether it may be gaming, streaming and editing in one, I think uh, that's why I chose uh, Intel over AMD, especially the Ryzen 7 5800X. And the third question, bro, why did you choose the Ryzen 7 5800X when you have the Ryzen 7 3700X priced much more lower and consumes much more power. So there are pretty much some reasons. First and foremost thing is the Zen 3 architecture. So the Zen 3 architecture provides good performance, nearly 32% increase in single core performance. And apart from that, reduced cache latencies and faster clock speeds are the other two reasons why I you know, chose the 5800X over 3700X. Yes, I do agree that the 3700X is priced a bit lower roughly around 27,000, 28,000. But yeah, I think the 5800X is a good choice for me because the single core performance matters a lot. And I'm a person who uh, does everything like streaming, gaming, video editing, and all those stuff. So I felt that the 5800X is much more powerful and worthy enough to spend a couple few bucks uh, to uh, get this processor. So yeah, that's the uh, third thing. And the fourth thing, I'm going to talk about the perks that the Ryzen 7 5800X has. Now, as I said in the beginning, Intel processor generally tend to have more stability is what I felt uh, in the past few years where I've used multiple PCs. What I felt is that yes, Intel has stability, like uh, its performance in gaming or in um, productivity workloads. Yes, it has a good stability. But when it comes to multitasking, as I said, I'm a person who has a workflow like I, I play for a team called ST12, I play PUBG. So yes, I am in the competitive scene of PUBG. I need more FPS. And the second thing, I'm a video editor slash content creator, so productivity is also equally important for me. So when you see a processor like the Ryzen 7 5800X that has eight cores and 16 threads and has, uh, you know, max boost frequency up to 4.7 gigahertz and can perform really well than the Intel counterpart, then then why, why not? I mean, these are some of the perks that I've myself experienced after upgrading to the Ryzen 7 5800X. Now, yes, 
whatever thing may be in this world it has a good and a bad side and let's talk about the cons and or the bad side of the Ryzen 7 5800X the first and foremost thing is the temperature oh my god when it comes to the Ryzen 7 5800X this CPU has gone over many controversies and you might have seen this video I don't want to uh, you know I, I don't remember the name but you might have seen this video where this youtuber has explained that why the Ryzen 7 5800X is not suggested for creators and if you see closely in this video he said that on full load he hits around 82 degrees of temperature I mean you might have seen in the b-roll right now that I am using the stock cooler of the Ryzen 5 2600 which is not supposed to be used because the stock cooler is only supposed to be used for the CPUs which has 65 watt of TDP whereas my CPU has 105 watt. Yes, I know it's a bad thing. I have a reason to it. Let me clearly explain. So when I was upgrading my processor, I had two options either to go upgrade the cooler or the cabinet. And if I go with the cooler or an AIO, I won't be uh, having enough space to fit it in my old cabinet. So I had to forcefully upgrade my new, uh, cabinet only then in the future I'll be able to upgrade to an AIO or a bigger air cooler. So yes, I'm going to use in the same setup for the next couple of months because now it's uh, winter over here in India and I don't think that it will degrade my process performance if I use it for two or three months with the stock cooler. So after you know two or three months, I'll probably switch to a good air cooler or a good AIO. So yeah, it's, it's only for two months. Guys, if you're watching this video, do not use the stock cooler. Uh, for the Ryzen 7 5800X. Wraith Prism, it's okay, but this is the stock cooler of the Ryzen 5 2600, so it's not suggestible. So despite using that, on full load on my PC, I observed that it touched maximum 90 degrees, which is pretty normal. I mean, it's, it's not that you should run it every day on 90 degrees, but then if you see AMD and the other YouTubers, they generally say that the Ryzen 7 5800X is hotter and it is meant to run hotter. And 82 degrees with an AIO on full load, it's, it's completely all right. And there is a specific reason to that. Let me clearly explain. So there's a technology called as AMD's Precision Boost. So what it does is that the processor recognizes available thermal headroom and utilizes it, allowing itself to add more voltage and clocks. This is why you see uh, the temperature of pretty much any uh, Zen 3 architecture CPUs go up especially the Ryzen 7 5800X. When you compare it with the Ryzen 9 5900 or the Ryzen 9 5950X or the Ryzen 5 5600X. So yeah, it, it is pretty much that feature uh, which actually allows it to increase the uh, temperature and all those stuff. So yeah, there are a few reasons and 82 degrees on full load with a good AIO is not bad. I mean, come on, it's it's a 5000 series CPU and AMD also said that it is meant to run hotter. It Its TDP is 105 watt. It, it is even much lesser than the Intel counterpart. So, I mean, yes, it's a con. Higher temperature is not good for a, a, a processor performance in the long run. But then, hey, I mean, most people upgrade their processor once in five years, I believe. And running, uh, you know, a processor like this at 82 degrees or 80 degrees on full load for the next five years won't cause any problem, I guess. So, yes, it is a con, although you can manage it with a good air cooler or a good AIO. So yeah, these are some of the things. And the final question, is it worthy to buy? Now, uh, if you ask me this question a couple of months before where it was priced around 39,000 rupees, well, I would have completely uh, ignored it because my plan to upgrade this processor initially was next year. But then I got this processor for 33,000, which is a bang for the buck. And that's why I upgraded to this processor. And in the US, it's even cheaper, only priced around $340.99, which is roughly around 26,000 rupees, I guess. So yeah, it's even cheaper in the US. So I mean, for that price, come on, this is a great deal. 8 core 16 thread processor, 5000 series of uh, AMD 7 nanometer architecture. What else you want? I mean, yeah, it runs hotter, but it is pretty much manageable if you have a budget for a good AIO or a good air cooler. I mean, Noctua and, uh, you know, AIOs from NZXTs work really well on the 5000 series processor. So, yeah, buying a 5000 series AMD CPU at this point in time is a good decision. Despite, yes, Intel is launching its 12th generation processors, which is really powerful. Alder Lake uh, architecture runs great on Windows 11. Everything is great. I, I completely agree. And even the Intel Core i5-12 
12600K, I don't know the exact uh, nomenclature, but then the Intel i5 uh, 12th gen is going to outperform the Ryzen 7 5800X for sure. This is something which uh, I am expecting to happen. But still, buying this processor for that price range, $340 or 33,000 Indian rupees, is not a big deal because it's priced lesser and it performs really well. It is actually comparable with Intel i9 10900K in terms of productivity. I'm not saying that it'll beat it, but then yeah, it can, it has a capacity to compete. So why not, why not buy this processor? So yeah, these are my thoughts and I've been using uh, this CPU uh, for the past one week on my PC. I really love the performance. You know, I'm able to crush in through many, uh, you know, uh, workloads, especially in productivity side. I'm able to easily handle 4K, 8-bit footages. I'm also able to easily crush uh, 1080p footages, 60 FPS, anything. So yeah, I love the performance both in gaming, streaming as well as editing so what do you think about the ryzen 7 5800x comment down your thoughts in the comment section below and if you have any other uh, opinions suggestions you can just definitely comment down below and as always if you really end up liking my content please do like this video because come on it helps in the algorithm to you know make it to reach to more people so yeah that's it for today's video hope you like this video subscribe to our channel this is me Anna signing off until the next one stay home stay safe take care and bye bye